It's been almost a month since President Trump fired Steve Bannon, his uh, chief strategist and human sloppy Joe. <laughs> now, during his time with Trump, Bannon operated from the shadows. But last night, he braved the lights of 60 Minutes to give his first major TV interview. And everyone immediately said, okay, uh, this mother should have stayed in the shadows. The Republican establishment is trying to nullify the 2016 election. That's a brutal fact. They need illegal aliens to fill the churches. Where does this end? Does it end in, does it end in taking down the Washington Monument? I don't need affirmation of the mainstream media. I don't care <laughs> what they say. I don't care what they say. They can call me an anti-Semite, they can call me racist, they can call me natives, they can call me anything you want, okay? Wow. It's like Donald Trump took a dump while he was tweeting. <laughs> and then wished for that dump to be a real boy. <laughs> I will name it Steve. <laughs> now, last night's Bannon interview wasn't particularly eye-opening. I mean, mostly, he just willingly confirmed that he is who we thought he was, a, a radical nationalist who believes that Donald Trump will be instrumental in tearing down the establishment. But one moment, one moment really showed how all-in he is on Trump. The campaign's biggest crisis was an October surprise when a 2005 video surfaced of Mr. Trump using vulgar language to describe his encounters with women. He made those remarks on a bus to TV host Billy Bush. A Billy Bush Saturday, to me, is a litmus test. It's a litmus test. When you side with a man, you side with him, okay? The good and the bad. You can criticize him behind, but when you side with him, you have to side with him. Man, that's loyalty. Even after Trump fired Bannon, he's still gonna fight for him from outside the White House. If Donald Trump ever kills someone, Bannon will be the guy driving the white supremacist Bronco. <laughs> oh, and also, I don't know if you, I don't know if you noticed this, but, uh, but Bannon has a very interesting way of rebranding the infamous Donald Trump pussy-grabbing scandal. Billy Bush Saturday, to me, is a litmus test. Christie, because of uh, Billy Bush uh, weekend, uh, and uh, was, uh, was uh, not looked at as for a cabinet position. Well, you took names on Billy Bush Sunday, didn't you? I did. Uh, I got him. He wasn't there for you on Billy Bush weekend, so therefore he doesn't get a cabinet position. And that's what Billy Bush weekend showed me. Billy Bush weekend? <laughs> Poor Billy Bush. Somewhere he must have been watching that interview like, come on, man! <laughs> Billy Bush, we I was just on the bus! Like, you can't name something after someone who happened to be there. That's like rebranding the JFK assassination, motorcade driver's bad day. <laughs> you could describe it that way, but that's not why it's famous. Now, now, if there's one issue Bannon is known for as well, it's, uh, it's his opposition to immigration. And on that front, he did not budge an inch. People have been able to come here, find a place, contribute to the economy. That's what immigration has been in America. You could be more dead wrong. America was built on her citizens. We're all immigrants. America was built Except on her... Except the Native don't, don't, Americans don't, 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 don't give me... This is the thing of the left. This is, right. Charlie, that's beneath you. Right. America's built on, her, on our citizens. Look at the 19th century, the control of our borders. Economic nationalism is what this country was built on. In the recipe of how to make America, I feel like Steve Bannon left out a crucial ingredient. Uh, he's just like, uh, economic nationalism, closed borders. That's what this country was... If he was making a cake, he would have been like, why is the cake not... Right? Oh, oh, yeah, slavery, of course. That's what was missing. There you go. That's how you may... I forgot the slaves. You see what happened there, my friends? They took down the statues, and Steve Bannon forgot the history. They were right. They were right. <laughs> I don't even know why he's fighting about this. Like, we all know America is a nation of immigrants. But you know what? Just for fun, we called a professional genealogist who uh, found out that Steve Bannon's great-great-grandfather... Lawrence Bannon, arrived in the U.S. from Ireland by the 1850s, right? At a time when America's borders were so open that Irish men could just walk into the country with no passports, no visas, no background checks of any kind. So in many ways, Steve Bannon's great-grandfather was a dreamer. Yeah, and his great-grandson is a nightmare. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Bannon... <laughs> Bannon... <laughs> Bannon held his own in last night's interview. But, but there were times when you could tell that Charlie Rose was getting under his skin. Just, just look at his face when he's asked questions that he doesn't like. You know that this White House leaks like nobody's ever seen a White House leak. And that's where the reporters are getting the story. And they're getting a story about conflict between you and H.R. McMaster. They're getting stories about conflict between you and Jared Kushner. <laughs> what the hell is that? Like, just, what, like, what is that? <laughs> 
I almost felt like if this interview had gone on any longer, I would have been seriously worried for the safety of Charlie Rose. And that's where the reporters are getting the story. And they're getting a story about conflict between you and H.R. McMaster. They're getting all these stories.